In this lecture, we're going to talk about dosimetry. We are going to learn how to measure the physical and biological effects of the radiation. In the previous lectures, we talked about the radiation, the types of the radiation, the types of the radioactive particles. And we've learned that in all of them, they affect our body in the same way. So they, they ionize the electrons and create the free electrons, which can damage the DNA of our cells. And they can do this differently, like directly, so they can affect the, uh, uh, to the DNA directly or indirectly by creating the free radicals to form the hydroxyl radicals, which they can damage the DNA again. So the damage of the DNA is bad because they can cause to the uh, cellular damage, to the genetic damage, or they can increase the cancer development, or they can uh, like influence the um, to the birth processes. So, and we, we, we use the radiation in the medical purposes as well, right? So we use the, so the radiation to treat the cancer and also in the diagnosis purposes. In, it, it is like, it's a natural question for us, like say how much radiation is the human is getting and whether, is it like, is it like dameageful and how much dameageful is this? So, so all of these processes, the subject which learns all of these processes, like the measuring the doses, is called the dosimetry. And today we're going to talk about some topics like uh, the exposure and absorb dose. Basically, it's a phys so measuring the physical effects of the radiation, and also about like a equivalent and effective dose. It is measuring the biological effects of the dose. So. Um, what we're going to do is so we measure the 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 dose which is coming from the radiation uh, by by measuring the energy change in some absorbed region or the mass of that region so basically so the radiation is measured only in that region which is absorbed so which is absorbing this radiation so basically i've got this region I'm measuring how much the energy change is, uh, is happening here and dividing this to the mass of this region. It is going to give us the measurement of the radiation or we, could, we denote this as a door, dose. So we call this as a absorbed dose, which is like a conceptual idea, right? Which doesn't give you a really intuition how we are going to do this. So the units of the radiation is called a gray, which is like a joules, per unit of the mass, per kilogram. So yesterday, and during the dinner, we had a discussion with, a, with, with my grandmother about how we can actually measure the radiation. For example, is it possible to just send some radiation to my hand and by just like measuring the temperature change on my hand, on this area of my hand, for example, to know how much radiation I'm getting? Uh, so in order to answer this question, so let's do like, a, 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 little, a little bit of calculations. So before we do this, I just would like to say you about the gray. So the one gray of radiation may cause to the 1,000 single DNA breaks, which is not like lethal yet, so the, it, it can repair itself. And at the same time, uh, one gray of radiation is, um, is enough to break 40 double strains of the DNA, which is already lethal. So like uh, even one gray is not so good. So like uh, we, we are going to do the calculations for higher grays of the radiation. So there is a formula which can connect the temperature with the, uh, with the energy. So the energy is going to be equal to the mass multiplied to the C, the spatial, heat um, of the matter multiplied to the delta T, so the temp temperature change. So the C, which is the spatial heat of matter, of matter is equal to 4,000 joules per kilogram multiplied to the Kelvin. for water. So we are going to use this value for the C since our, our body contains mostly um, the water. So um, from this formula, from the first formula, I'm going to find the delta T. So the delta T, in order to do this, I just need to put this MC 
is the right hand side part, right? So by dividing both of the parts as the MC, we can put them to the left hand side. So it's going to be delta T is equal to the E over MC. So what I would like to do is, I would like to say eight grains of radiation and measure how the temperature is changing, right? So eight grains basically, eight grains is equal to the eight joules per one kilogram, right? So here, I would like to write this here, it's going to be eight joules divided to the one kilogram, right? Multiplied to the spatial heat of the water, which is going to be a 4,000 joules divided to the kilogram multiplied to the Kelvin. So here we can just divide as joules, divide the kilograms, right? A divided to the four thousands, it's going to be like uh, two multiplied to the one over thousands, right? Or you can write this as a two divided to the thousand. If I divide both of the sides to the uh, to, to one to four thousands uh, to, to four sorry so multiply to the Kelvin so this Kelvin goes to the numerator so the change of the energy by the eight grade of radiation is equal to the two over one thousand Kelvins which is really tiny so basically so the eight grades of radiation is lethal which may affect as a severe biological effects to our human body, but even this huge radiation amount of the radiation cannot so it changes the temperature really slowly, so which is really difficult for us to measure. So basically, it's not a good idea to measure the temperature, so the, the temperature change in order to measure how much radiation we are getting. So this. Uh, so that is why we need to think about more other so different concepts uh, about the measurement of the radiation. One of them is called the exposure. So what does the exposure is that it basically measures the charge around this, this volume, for example, and divides us to the mass of this area, and it gives you some measurement of the, uh, of the radiation. So I'm just going to explain you what does it mean in more details. So let's say I've got a region where I would like to send the radiation. So this region, say so which contains lots of electrons here. Let's say inside here, which are negatively charged and we can measure the charge. And there are some electrons around this region as well. So I'm sending some radiation. So the radiation basically in this case is going to be like, yes, some radiation. So it affects the electrons differently. For example, some of the electrons may just go out and they, they can be ionized. Some of the, so let me color, do this with a different color. So they may go just simply out. Some of the electrons may hit this one and hit this one. So this might go just out and hit this one, which can go in. So basically there are a lot of electron movements are going on whenever we send the radiation to this part. So whenever all the things are becoming to the equilibrium position where the electrons stop moving, we can measure the charge on the borders of this region, on the borders of this region. And, um, and th this is how we are going to measure the radiation, basically. Radiation in this case is going to be the, um, the charge around the borders of this, of this meta, of this region divided to its mass is going to give us the radiation. So the units of the exposure is the coulombs over the kilogram. So this is how we are going to measure. So this is one of the classical uh, ways of measuring the radiation and was made for like, uh, for, yeah, for the x-rays and and the, and the gamma rays. So the, the problem is that so, so every electron, so yeah, so, so we are doing this radiation, right? And we say that the radiation creates the electrons, but the electrons uh, might have different kinetic energy. For example, if the electrons which are coming into this region, 
have the smaller kinetic energy, they can move out some of the electrons inside the region, of course, but they cannot create the heat or the, like, uh, the extra, uh, extra photons. But if, the, um, if you're sending the highly energized electron to this region, so they can affect the electrons inside this region, but also they may create some, some of the radiation, the extra radiation. So some heat may go out from this region. For example, um, uh, we, we've learned about the bream Schrödinger effect. So when the electron uh, which, so with, the high, with the high energy is coming closer to the, another uh, electron may cause the, uh, the, the gamma, uh, uh, so may, may emit the gamma radiation or the X-ray and so on. So the, uh, the exposure is not measuring the, the, the amount of the energy which is going out from here, right? So the photons, for example, do not have the charge and they can just go out from this region and our measurement uh, equipments cannot measure. So basically, so the exposure is bad when the radiation has, if, uh, is, is, is happening with the highly energized electrons. So that is why we need to figure out something different. And uh, the another way of measuring the radiation is called like a KIRMA, so which is abbreviated and as the uh, uh, is the acronym for the kinetic energy release per mass unit. Basically, instead of uh, simply measuring the charge around the uh, around this part of the of the body, we're going to measure the energy change. Basically, how much the kinetic energy is changing on the unit mass. So the units of the kerma is is a gray again. So yeah. So for the low um, energy photons and the electrons, so the kerma numerically is going to give you the same value as exposure. Because as I explained to you, so the electrons are moving around, and if they have the low energy, they cannot produce lots of like a extra radiation, like the photons, which are going to go out from this region. But if the electrons which are moving are have the really high energy, so they can interact with the others, they can create like a like a lots of radiation, extra radiation, which can go out, and the exposure is not able to measure them. So we are just going to put some equipment to just measure the like uh, the the energy which is going to be released from fr from this region, and this is going to be done using so called like a Kerma concept. So these two concepts are the physical concepts. Basically, we're going to measure the radiation on some region by depending on the charge of this region or depending on the energy change on this region. But th this is not really true from the biological point of view because uh, so we've learned about the three different types of the radioactive particles, like uh, the alpha particle, beta particle, and gamma particle. So they are different, right? In terms of the uh, atomic mass, in terms of the charge. So the alpha particle have four atomic mass in the plus two charge beta particles, for example, minus one and zero, and gamma is going to have the zero atomic mass and zero charge. So even though they, uh, they emit, or they emit the same amount of the energy, so we said that, hey, physically, uh, we are going to measure the effect of the radiation using so-called Kirma, right? Where we're going to just change, hey, how much energy is released by the radioactive particles per unit of the mass, right? But the problem is that it de so depending on the type of the radiation, so this energy may be released differently. So we've learned about some, some concept which is called the LET, so the linear energy transmission basically tells you how fast this energy is released by the different radioactive particles. We know that the, so the alpha particle is huge, right? Okay, it is uh, in terms of the mass and charge, it's going to attract lots of electrons and it's going to release the same amount of the energy in a smaller distances than, for example, the beta particle. So basically, 
if I would like to say, hey, how much energy is going to be, so some units, like 100% of the energy is going to be released in one centimeter for the alpha particle, while for the 100% energy is going to be released in um, 100 centimeters per beta particle, right? So, uh, so basically, I just would like to say you, the alpha particles are going to emit, so the alpha and beta particles are going to emit the same amount of the energy, but they can do this in a different phase. So the alpha particle may release the same amount of the energy much faster than the beta particle. So biologically, it means that it is going to damage more DNA strips in a smaller distances. Okay, so it basically means that biological, biologically, so affecting from the alpha particle is bad, is worse than getting the radiation from the beta particle because they can release the energies in a really small distances. It means that they can damage the DNA cells 20 times more than the beta particle. So we, are, so we are going to improve our, uh, the, the measurements of the dose and including this concept like, hey, so, our, so we need to measure the energy per unit mass, but also we need to know which kind of, which type of the radiation is being affected to, to, to the body. So this, um, this concept is called like a, the, this concept is called the equivalent dose, where we are going to get this uh, dose, which we have measured before, like by, by, change, by measuring the energy change by unit mass, and multiply this to the uh, weight of the radioactive particles, okay? So basically, if the radiation is coming from the alpha particle, then the dose should be multiplied to the 20, for example, then when the radiation is coming from the beta particle. For example, so the unit of the equivalent dose is the sievert. It's like the same as the joules per kilogram, but now we are going to multiply this to some, like a, to some weight, some constant. For example, this weight is equal to the one for the photons or the, for the electrons, so for the gamma and beta particles, and it's equal to the 20 for the alpha particles. Basically, we measure the two different types of the energy changes, right? And for the alpha particles, we're going to multiply this to the 20. So in terms of the effects, the biological effects, so the, the, the radiation which is coming from the alpha particle is 20 times more than the radiation which is coming from the beta particle and the gamma particle. So this is not the end. The, 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 there is another, the one more concept which we need to cover here. So this is a really good comprehensive um, concept of measuring the dose. So it includes the, the physical changes and also some biological changes, but not, it, it's not really correct for the humans. The thing is like each of the human organs ha will have the different masses and sizes. And also whenever they receive the radiation, they might be at the different levels of the risk. For example, the irradiating the ovaries or testes may lead to the genetic uh, damage in offspring, but, but, but at the same time, radiating the bone marrow may lead to the future development of the leukemia. So the different organs are being in the different risks. So we cannot just like uh, send the radiation and the uh, like, so, so sending the same amount of the radiation, like uh, with the, so, the same amount, the equivalent dose to ovaries or to the lungs and to the liver may cause different types of the damage to our body. So what we're going to do is we are going to define the organs which are going to be on the high level of the risk, the intermediate level of the risk and the low level of the risks. Basically, the organs which are at the high level of the risk are, might be, uh, are the bone marrow, the lungs, the stomach, and colon. The organs at the low risk are esophagus, bladder, and liver. And intermediate late risk is going to be coma. So we are going to implement the level of the, 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 level of the risk 
by including one more coefficient to our um, previous formulas. So previously, if you remember, I've got the dose, which we measure physically, and we're going to just multiply this to some constant depending on the radiation type. Basically, if the radiation is coming from the alpha particle, they may cause more damage to our body. So that is why we have to multiply this as a bigger number, for example, 20. Then whenever it comes from the beta particles. And we are going to multiply this to multiplication again to one more coefficient, which is going to be the weight of the human organ where we are sending this radiation. For example, if so, the, if so the unit of this radiation is also the sievert, it's the joule per kilogram. So you, you, you may notice probably that the gray have the same units, like a joules per kilogram, but we're just multiplying those rays to so two different constants. Like uh, now we're multiplying this to the weight of the radiation and may, rate of the risk, right? So this table contains the, those weights for the different types of the organs. So the effective dose is really a comprehensive way of measuring the effects of the radiation on the biological level because it can so it takes into the account the physical effects of the radiation and also it takes into the account the types of the radiation and